Dave Antonini. Well, racquetball came about in the uh, late 60s, and uh, I was a freshman in college in 68, 69, and 69, 70 is when I started playing. I had been playing handball prior to that. You know, over the years you uh, develop a, uh, a friendship with the people you play with and you enjoy the, not only the camaraderie of other players, but you also enjoy just the, the activity. And I started playing back in the 60s and I've been playing ever since. Yeah, it's just an opportunity to think of something else. Uh, I'm retired now, but prior to retirement, I worked as a policeman in Phoenix. And I found that racquetball was a great escape. Stop for a little while, just not worry about work and issues, and just play some racquetball and have fun. It's all recreational, but uh, I have played in tournaments. Most of the time up here, there's just not a tournament level player, uh, but your station manager and I have played tournaments before. Well, we have a, I would say a core group of players, maybe three or four of us that play regularly. And then there's probably another four or five that are just occasional. The good thing about us playing almost every Tuesday and every Thursday is some of the players are, we don't necessarily keep in touch with everybody all the time, you know, like where we coordinate a game or anything else. Sometimes we do, but generally speaking, those players that know that we play on Tuesdays and Thursdays, they, if they come into town, they'll come and play pretty much assured that we're gonna be here. Most of the time we are. I try to get in two days a week. As a group, we play um, Tuesdays and Thursdays, every Tuesdays and Thursdays. Uh, and we've been doing the same thing for probably 10, 11 years. Those of us that play, we're all getting older. These guys that are playing at night, we're all getting older. So the, the life of the sport is dependent on the younger players coming up, learning how to play, uh, and taking an interest in playing and, and everything. So we've tried to have a couple clinics here, uh, Mel and I, and uh, it was okay at first, and then after a while, everybody tends to do other things, have other commitments. So after playing outdoor uh, racquetball for a couple years, I decided that I wanted to get much better at it and actually play in tournaments. So I hired a, a professional, a teaching professional, to give me racquetball lessons so that I could get started in learning how to do it right before I developed all the bad habits. So after I developed the, the, the better habits and everything, then I was able to then further practice on my own. I didn't have to have lessons for a really long time. You just need to learn the basics, learn how to practice, and then spend the time on the court. So they can come out, learn the basics of the game. If they have reasonable hand-eye coordination, you can pick it up probably in a day or two. Hit the ball around, you know, and have some fun. You know, it's a, it's a good cardio workout. If you have aspirations of playing in tournaments, really want to be good at it, then it would be to your advantage to pay for professional lessons to actually learn how to play the game. The reason for that is it's much harder to break bad habits than it is to learn good ones. So if you start playing and just playing with the boys next door or, or the kids at the park or whatever, you develop your bad habits. They're hard to break. It's like anything else in the world, riding a motorcycle or anything else. If you develop bad habits to begin with, those are hard to break. And then you have to learn kind of anew. 
You just need something to hold the strings. That's all you need. And you can get a kit like at Walmart or some of the other stores, Big Five or any of the others. You can probably get a, a kit that would come with a, a glove. You can get a racket and you get some balls and probably cost you less than $50. I'd like to have uh, any of your viewers uh, consider playing a little bit, um, giving it a try. I mean, our, our sport is, I won't say it's dying, but it is not flourishing. Back in the 70s and 80s, it was a very popular sport. There were tournaments every week. There are still tournaments, but the draw is a little smaller. It's starting to redevelop, but you know, a lot of the players are older. And it's, it'd be great if we could get younger players interested in playing the game. Well, they could talk to uh, the owner, uh, John Antoni, for example. He, he runs the place. He's the, one of the owners. Or Mel West uh, can c come in in the evenings and talk to me on Tuesdays or Thursdays. I'd uh, be more than happy to give them some basics and, uh, and an idea of what to get. Um, unfortunately, I don't believe there's anybody here right now that teaches racquetball, but there's a couple advanced players that would be happy to, to sit and, you know, play some, you know, some ball with them and show them some pointers.